ان الحمد لله نحمده ونشكره ونستعينه ونستهديه ونعوذ به من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا انه من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه ومن سلك مسلكه باحسان الى يوم الدين وبعد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار فنعوذ بالله من عذاب النار ان شاء الله سبحانه وتعالى our topic of this course today is one of the diseases of the heart one of the things bothering many of us one of the things that most of us we fight we combat with every day and night and that is al ujabu arrogance thinking you have it all thinking you are the best thinking because i do this i did that you are above others asbabuhu wa ilajuhu what are the causes what is the treatment of this arrogance it is something that we battle with all day and night as a result of the blessings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before you became arrogant before you add something that will make you to be arrogant of you were nothing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says hal ata ala al-insan hin min al-dahr lam yakun shay'an mazkura was there no a time that a man was not mentioned at all he wasn't known you were born helpless you started growing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored you he blessed you you have a lot of things then you are now the person of substance today then you became you, you become arrogant you think you are the best al ujub was the meaning according to some of the uh, the salaf abu al-abbas al-qurtubi alayhi rahmatullah he said i'jab ar-rajul bi nafsihi huwa that a man becomes arrogant of himself is mulahadatuhu laha bi ayn al-kamal wal istihsan ma'a nisyan minnat Allah ta'ala is when a man begins to look at himself with the eyes of perfection like subhanallah i am this and that i can make mistake i can do that who are you to tell me that this is what i'm doing when a man begins to look at himself with an eye of perfection ma'anisiyani minnati llah but with forgetting the minna the favor of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon him whatever you have today whether knowledge whether power whether wealth don't forget that you did not create yourself allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created you 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed that for you. And that is what Imam Al-Qurtubi said about arrogance. Suila Abdullah ibn Mubarak. Another scholar, another salaf. He was hacked. And mafhum al what is the meaning of arrogance? And he responded, "And tara anna 'indaka shay'an laysa 'inda ghayrik." It is when you think that you have something that nobody else has. It is when you think that you have what others do not have. That is arrogance. <laughs> Another scholar was hacked again. Ibn al-Qayyim alayhi rahmatullah. He said, وَلْيَحْذَرْ الْعَبْدْ A servant should be very careful. كُلَّ الْحَظْ At the most level of his carefulness. He should be careful at the most level. مِنْ طُغْيَانْ From the excessive, excessiveness or from the extremism of أَنَا وَلِي وَعِنْدِي the statement of it is me, I am the one, without me, you cannot be this, it is me. The statement of I, me, myself, one should be very careful about it. فَإِنَّ هَذِهِ الْأَلْفَاظِ الثَّلَاثَةِ Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim said these three statements, إِبْتُلِيَ بِهَا Iblis. Iblis was tested with those statements. وَفِرْعَوْنْ Same thing to Fir'aun. Wakarun, Karun was tested with the statement of myself, I, me. Iblis in the Quran, if we take a look at Surah to Al-A'raf, verses 11 to 12, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَاكُمْ ثُمَّ صَوَّرْنَاكُمْ We have created you, and we have fashioned you the best of picture. ثُمَّ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَ Then we said to the angels, Usjudu li Adam, prostrate for Adam. Fasajadu, the angels they prostrated. Illa iblis, but iblis, iblis did not prostrate for Adam. Lam yakun min asajidin. Allah said he is not among those who prostrated. Call and Allah asked him, Ma manaka alla tasjuda if Amr took. What what prevented you from prostrating when I commanded you to do so? And the statement of ease is Ana khayrun min I am better than him Ana khayrun min I am better than him Statement of arrogance Khalaqtani min nar He said you created me from the fire Wa khalaqtahu min tuin And you created him from the, from the dust Naam, look at this statement Ana khayrun min I am better than him These are some of the statements that most of us we make because you think you have what someone someone else does not have. But you forget that someone else that you think does not have what you have has a lot of things that is not obvious to you that you do not have. Allah blesses us differently. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Fir'aun when he also used this statement. Fir'aun said in Surah to Zukhruf verse 51. وَنَادَى فِرْعَوْنِ فِرْعَوْنِ called فِي قَوْمِهِ He called his people قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ And he said, oh my people آه لَيْسَ لِي مُلْكُ مِسْرِ آه لَيْسَ لِي مُلْكُ مِسْرِ The dominion of Misr of, Misr of Egypt is enough, is enough for me? Am I not the owner of the dominion of Misr? Look at the statement I, myself, me Like thinking you are this and that these are statements of arrogance that could ruin human being, that could ruin the servant of Allah if he's not, if he's not careful about it. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. Amen. What are the signs? There are a lot of signs that man will see, will begin to see within him that when he begins to see those signs, he should know that there, these signs are some of the signs of arrogance that he needs to work on. That it needs to treat because it's a treatment. In fact, inshallah, if time permits us, I will explain how arrogance is related to shirk. When I say shirk, I mean shirk will ask you. A shirk, kusman. Shirk is of two types. We have the major one, we have the minor one. 
The major one nullifies all actions. The minor one nullifies the specific action. When you do an action and you have an atom of arrogance in that action, that is equivalent to something like Riyadh. Because Riyadh, the difference between a Riyadh and al ujb is that a Riyadh, you do it for the sake of people, other people to know, for the, for the sake of the creation of Allah. But al ujb you do that for the sake of yourself. Subhanallah. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. Some of the signs that you could see is Adam was Sama'in Nasiha. When people begin to advise you, and he said, don't tell me that. Who are you to tell me that I know what I'm doing? I was born before you. What experience do you have? When people start advising you and you begin to say statements like that, then there's a problem. Another thing is, احتقارُ الناس وتسعيرُ الخدِّ لهم. When you begin to look down upon people, that they are nothing. Probably because you achieve this, you achieve that. You think others who do not achieve the same status of yours, they are nothing. They are nobody. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna akramakum عند الله أتقاكم. The best of you in the sight of Allah are those who are pious. Not those who are rich. Not those who are poor. Not those who are, you know, those that are pious. Another sign of al-ujb, of arrogance, is al-mubahatu bil-ilm. When you begin to show off that you have knowledge. In fact, the beauty of knowledge is the more you have it, the more you are humble. That is the beauty of knowledge. The more you possess knowledge, the more knowledge humbles you. When you do not have a substantial knowledge, you begin to... But when you have knowledge, knowledge humbles the person who has it. Because you know that there are a lot of things that you do, know, you do not know. One of the, one, one of the poets, he said, كُلِّ مَنْ يَدَّعِي بِالْعِلْمِ مَعْرِفَةِ Tell someone who is claiming that he knows everything. عَرَفْتَ شَيْئًا وَغَادَتَ عَنْكَ أَشْيَاءً you just know one thing, but a lot of things are there that you do not know. Then why the arrogance? What do you think you are? We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. Another sign is التفاخروا بالقوة والجمال والمال When you begin to show off that you have power, that you have, you know, you are beautiful, you are handsome. Nobody is as beautiful as you are. Nobody is as handsome as you are. You are the most handsome person. Subhanallah. This is the beauty of Allah. This is the favor of Allah upon you. You don't have, you don't have to boast. And you are not the one who gave yourself. Allah gifted you. The power you had, Allah gifted you. The fame you have, Allah gifted you. The money you have, Allah gifted you. Then who are you boasting for? Is it the, the, the creation of Allah or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, that gifted you? These are some of the diseases of the heart in relation to al-ujb, arrogance. There are some of, there are a lot of causes of arrogance. I will mention few, but a lot of them. Among the causes of arrogance is al-jahalu bi sifatillah. Al-jahalu bisifati la ignorance of the attributes of Allah. When you do not know Allah in reality, you boast. You think you have it all. You forget that you may have it today and before tomorrow. I'm not even saying far, far tomorrow. Before tomorrow, in the next 24 hours, you may not have it anymore. When you know Allah, you know that anything could happen. Ma bayna ghamdati aynin wa tibahatiha. يُغَيِّرُ اللَّهُ مِنْ حَالٍ إِلَى حَالٍ Within a twinkle of an eye, Allah could change the status of people. One could be alive today, in the next minute, it will be, it will be, no, more, it will be no, no more. When you understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will not, be, you will not boast. You will limit your, your fakh. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ اللَّهُمْ مَالِكَ الْمُلْكِ Say, O oh Allah, 
the owner of all dominion tu'til mulka man tasha you give the dominion to who you want wa tanzi'ul mulka mimman tasha you take the dominion the power the wealth from whoever you want wa tu'izzu man tasha you grant whoever you want the fame the wealth the, the status you grant whoever you want wa tudhillu man tasha and you make you ever you want to be nobody in fact when it's coming people will not even know that someone is coming it is you allah that does that bi yadika al khair in your hand is all goodness innaka ala kulli shay'in qadir indeed you have the power over everything now from this verse it explains everything that we are talking about allah has the dominion over everything he could make you to be who you are today he could he could take whatever you have from you today Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa lana balwanakum bi shay min al khawf wal ju' we will test you we will test you don't think because you have it all we won't test you we will test you bi shay min al khawf sometimes you you be you be fearful you just you just be having this fear wal ju' sometimes you will find food you won't see وَنَقُصْ مِنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ Sometimes you won't see any fruit. Sometimes you die abruptly. It may not be you, it may, it may be a close person. نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends the verse فَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ But give glad tidings to those who are patient. الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ Those that when calamity befalls on them, قالوا they would say انا لله وانا اليه راجعون we are heard from allah and to allah we shall return this is where we will know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who grants all the dominion so we don't have to be arrogant because arrogant is one of the diseases of the heart is one of the things that will make you to go away from the path of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala It's one of the things that you will, that will make you to think your ibadah is enough for us is not enough. <coughs> Another thing that could cause arrogance which this one is not from the person that is doing the arrogance but from those people around him and we have to be very careful. That is iqra'ud nas li shakhs over praising someone. We have to be very careful about it, about this over praising someone even if the person does an action that deserves to be praised there's no problem but in praising say only what you know let me relate a hadith from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and abi bakr radiyallahu an abu bakr may allah be pleased with him he said asna rajulun ala rajul ala rajul inda an-nabiy sallallahu alaihi wasallam He man praised another man in the sight of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Faqal and the man told the man as Faqal the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told the man who praised the other person. Wailak it is a statement of why do you do so? Wailak is not all the time that has to do with addua wa ala shakhs. Here it means why do you do so? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was rebuking the man who, who was praising another man. You have cut the neck of your friend. The Prophet ﷺ repeated this statement three times. You have cut the neck of your friend. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, Man kana minkum madihan, whoever that really wants to praise, if you do not have anything but to praise, if you want to praise, la mahala, if there is no way out, you must praise. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us a lesson. And what is the lesson? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi said, "Falyaqul ahsibu fulanan wallahu hasibuhu wa la uzakki 'ala Allahi ahada." I think about this man like this. Ahsibu fulana. I think he is like this. Wallahu hasibuhu but Allah knows him well. Wala uzakki 'ala Allah ahada. I will never praise and I will never purify anybody over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you know the covet. But the covet, do you know it? 
you know what is happening. But the hidden, do you know it? We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that our hidden should be better than our hovet. Innahu waliyu dhalika wal qadiru alayhi. Astaghfirullah wal ili wa lakum wa lisa'il al-muslimin fastaghfiru innahu wal ghafur al-rahim. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه. We are talking about the causes of arrogance. Another cause, another cause of arrogance is تربية الأبوي. The parents, سبحان الله. We parents, we have a lot of impact on our children. The way we have is likely. The way our children will be. What, whatever we possess, the way we do is like, there is likelihood of our children to do the same. One of the poets, he said, One of the birds, he was, it was walking one day, and it was, you know, it was, the, the bird was walking in a way that was not uh, balanced. فَقَلَّدَ شَكْلَ مِشْيَتِهِ بَنُوا the, the younger ones of the bird, when they saw the bird walking in a way that was not balanced, they imitated the bird like that. They were walking in the, the same style. فَقَالَ عَلَامَ تَخْتَالُونَ قَالُوا And the bird, when he looked back, he saw the, the children doing the same thing. And he asked them, why are you, why are you doing like this? عَلَامَ تَخْتَالُوا Why are you walking like this? And they responded, "Badata bihi wa nahnu muqallidu." You started the walking, and we followed you. "Am I tadiri yabana kull fardin?" Oh, our father, don't you know that everyone you jari bil khuto man adabuhu, whoever is training you, you look, you look like the, the the training looks like the trainer. The trainee becomes like the trainer. That is why in, in, in Arab they would say كيفما كان المرب كيفما يكون المرب يكون المربع The way the trainer is there is likelihood that the trainee would be like that. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. <laughs> to mention a few some of the ways in which we can overcome arrogance. The first one is الإخلاس في كل العمل علنا وباطنا we should have sincerity in all the action that we do in the public and in hidden we should do it for the sake of Allah we should not do it for the sake of other people because ikhlas is one of the major things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from all the servants. When we do thousands of actions and there is no ikhlas, subhanallah, it is null and void. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our, our actions. So ikhlas is doing those actions with sincerity, with optimal sincerity. Don't expect praise from anyone. Don't expect anyone to say, oh, thank you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about uh, those who were feeding other people in Surah Al-Insan. وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطُعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَحْسِيرًا إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا Whatever we do, we should do it for the sake of Allah. With ikhlas and following the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I think we'll be able to be safe and protected from the shackles and the disease of arrogance. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect each and every one of us. Ameen. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqa. Warzukna al-tiba'a. Wa arina al-baatila baatila. Warzukna al-chinaba. Allahumma la tada' lana dhamman illa ghafartah. Wa la hamman illa farrajtah. Wa la daynan illa qadaytah. Wa la maridan illa shafaytah. Wa la hajatan min hawaij al-dunya wal-akhirah. إلا قضيتها يا أرحم الراحمين. We pray for our brothers that are having their commencement this week. 
We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them blessings. Uh, we pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this should be the beginning of their blessings in life and in akhirah. Innahu waliyu dhalika wal qadiru alayhi. We congratulate you for the, the job well done. It's not easy. And uh, we are using this medium also to say that whatever we achieve in life, let us channel it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us the blessings therein. And I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our endeavors, future endeavors, we pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us blessings accordingly. Ameen. Innahu waliyu dhalik wal qadiru alayhi.